Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time we're going to add some extra Ethernet ports to my home network by installing an unmanaged network switch. So, if there are no more free Ethernet sockets on the back of your Wi-Fi router and you need to plug in another device, or if you have a room with a single Ethernet socket and you need more Ethernet sockets, then that is the problem we're going to fix. Right, here is the network switch that I purchased, which is a TP-Link TL-SG1-05S. And this is a five-port gigabit unmanaged switch for which I paid £12.97 here in the UK, with the price starting from about $15 in the United States. However, there are lots of alternatives available, with another very popular brand for networking hardware being D-Link. Now, when purchasing a switch, there are three key things to consider. Firstly, how many new network sockets do you require? This model, for example, comes with either five ports as here, but you can get eight ports, 16, 24, or even 48 ports on a version of this hardware. And as we'll see, you'll end up with one or two fewer ports than the number on the switch. Secondly, you need to select a speed. And for most home networks today, I would recommend a one gigabit switch like this, rather than a device limited to 10 or 100 megabits. You can also now buy 2.5 and even 10 gigabit switches, but these do cost considerably more. So I'd only go higher than one gigabit if you have computers and storage devices with 2.5 or 10 gigabit ethernet ports, and you really need the extra speed for things like accessing local network storage. In this context, it's also worth noting that globally, average broadband speeds are no more than a few hundred megabits. So a one gigabit switch like this really is fine for connecting devices to the internet in most homes. Thirdly, you need to select the type of switch as switches come in three variants. Firstly, there are unmanaged switches, which are simple plug and play devices that enable computers and peripherals with a network connection to communicate. Secondly, we have managed switches, which can be configured using software. For example, to create private virtual local area networks within your network. And finally, there are smart switches, also known as self-managed switches, which have limited configuration options. And unless you have complex networking requirements, for most homes, I would recommend a non-managed switch like this one, as no configuration is required. So let's now bring in Stanley the knife and open this thing up. Just cut through the uh, cellophane so we can get inside. Simple unboxing other than that, I think. But always exciting to open up new computer kit. There we are. And inside here, piece of cardboard it looks like. The suspense is killing us. There it is. Here is the, uh, the switch itself in a nice little uh, metal box. Nice uh, solid piece of stuff that. Very good. Uh, down here we have a little manual, I think. You may look at that, you never know. We have a power adapter. Obviously quite important. Without that, it won't work. And finally, we have some uh, rubber feet, I think, which we can probably put on the base of this because you might want to wall mount this or you might want to just sit it on your desk. This is a device which has got no fan inside it. This is a silent device. If you are selecting a network switch, do think about that. Do you want one without a fan? If it's going to be inside, it may make a lot of noise. And also think about the power rating. This draws just under 2.5 watts. And today, when you've got devices on all the time, like a network switch, you do want to think about the power rating. Finally, it's worth noting that here, and quite commonly, there isn't an Ethernet cable included in this box. We haven't missed anything over here. So you may well want to get an Ethernet cable, a patch lead like this, to connect the switch to your, your Wi-Fi router, as we're doing in a second. And if you are getting a cable, make sure it's at least Cat5e and ideally Cat6, like we've got here. Or with the proper tools, you can make your own cables, as I demonstrated in my video on wiring Ethernet extensions. Anyway, here I've got this pre-made 0.5 meter patch cable. So let's now go and connect this switch to my network. So, 
Here we have my Wi-Fi router, or as we generally say in the UK, router, but however we pronounce it, this is the device that connects to the phone line that provides my internet connection and which communicates with hardware on my network using Wi-Fi or Ethernet. And before people start typing in the comments, I'm aware that technically this is a gateway device that includes a modem, a router or router, and a wireless access point. Anyway, in terms of this video, the most important thing is that if we look around the back, we can see that all four Ethernet ports are in use. So it's not possible to plug anything else into this device. We don't have any free sockets. And this, of course, is why I've got a switch. So if we bring in our switch like this and it's all powered up, I've got the adapter connected. All we need to do is to take our cable and plug it into one of the ports on the switch like that. And the other end has to plug into the router or the router. We haven't got a free socket. So what we have to do is to remove something already plugged in like that. And then we can now plug this cable in here like this. And there we are. We've now got our switch connected to my network. And I've now got four extra Ethernet ports available. Except, of course, I haven't really, because if I reach down here on the floor, I can find this cable, which was plugged in over here a second ago. So this really has to be plugged in like this, because if it isn't, whatever's connected to this isn't going to work anymore. So actually, by fitting a five port switch, we've ended up with three extra ports. Many people will tell you you always lose one port when you connect a switch because it's the one that connects it to, to your router, your routing device. But in practice, if all your ports are full here before you start, you've always got to plug something back in again, so you'll gain two less ports from a number on the switch. Oh, and if you're wondering, on a basic unmanaged switch like this, it shouldn't matter which socket you select to connect it to the router. Although it's common to use socket one, as I've done here, and it's always worth checking the guide or manual. And at the other end, you can connect the switch to any Ethernet port on your router, providing that you don't use the WAN socket dedicated to your incoming phone or cable connection or to a separate modem. And to make everything super clear, here we have a diagram showing how we've connected the switch to my home network. And I can now add more computers and peripherals to the network using the switch. Now, having explained how to set up a switch connected directly to a Wi-Fi router, this isn't actually how I'm going to use mine. So, we'll use the magic of filmmaking to put everything back how it was. And I've done this because one of the cables connected to my router actually plugs into a wall socket that I fitted in my wiring Ethernet extensions video, and which in turn connects to a cable that goes outside to my garage. And it's terminated in this socket here. And on occasions I want to plug several devices in in this location. So what I'm going to do is to take out this wire that currently goes into my test rig PC, put in a patch lead like this, if I can get it in. There we are. And the other end of this lead is going to plug into the switch, which is here, all powered up. So let's plug in the cable like this to connect it to the rest of the network. And I can now plug back in my test PC. You can go up that end like that. And I can also plug in more computers like this one, like that, which will uh, come to life. You'll see them communicating with little lights coming on on the device. Very exciting because I've now got more Ethernet ports available in the room where I make my explaining computers videos. And to show you what this looks like in terms of a total network, here's a diagram. All we've basically done here is to take the switch and put it at the end of a very long extension, which gives me more Ethernet ports I can use in a remote location. Now, I'm sure that some of you are wondering if the switch will bottleneck network performance. However, using a modern network switch, it's not the case that bandwidth is simply divided. So, for example, just because this switch has a one gigabit connection to the router does not mean that each of the four devices we can connect to it will end up with a 250 megabit connection. Obviously, the combined bandwidth available to all connected devices is limited to one gigabit. But 
when the devices are not in competition, the full 1 gigabit is available to any device. And all devices on the switch can enjoy a 1 gigabit connection to each other. To test things out, I've connected two computers to the switch in my garage. And I've set up a shared folder so we can copy a large file across the network from one to the other. As we can see, the speed obtained is about 112 megabytes per second, which is 0.896 gigabits and a typical real-world transfer rate over 1 gigabit Ethernet. Next, I'll rearrange things so that one computer is connected directly to my router and the other remains connected to the switch. And if we now copy across another large file, we find that we obtain an identical speed. Hence, we can be certain that there's no bottleneck when devices are not in competition. And even if, for example, two computers were accessing the same NAS drive simultaneously, the available bandwidth to be shared would be limited by the 1 gigabit connection to the NAS drive itself. Today, most home computing devices have Wi-Fi. However, for the most reliable and secure network connection, wired Ethernet remains the best solution. And as we've seen in this video, it's pretty straightforward to add more Ethernet ports by installing a network switch. But now that's it for another video. If you've enjoyed what you've seen here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. And I hope to talk to you again very soon. Oh,